<laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to be having a conversation with someone who, if you do listen to a lot of Ghanaian music, you should know already. However, I'm going to let her introduce herself. Today, we're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about the fact that she's doing something completely different at the moment and a little bit more about life and everything in between. Yes. So I'm going to let her introduce herself. Yeah, I don't often do this on the <laughs> channel. So yeah, who Hi. are we having yes. here? Hi, everyone. My name is Adoma and I am a singer. I'm an actress. I like to think of myself as a creative or an all round entertainer. Um, just because there might be stuff that I might dabble in in the future that I'm not even aware of. Um, but yeah, basically that's who I am. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, for me, this is, uh, is, it, is it a word? Serendipity? Was serendipity? It's a word, it's a word right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> so when I was in radio and Adama started music, I remember interviewing her on the show Brunch in the City when she was doing the covers and the mashups and all those things. So Adama was doing music for a while and then she vanished. Yeah. So she's here to tell us the story, how she's been and acting and how all that happened so yeah. i don't know where she wants to start from um but, uh, okay so let me start from dipping dipping a bit into yeah. um okay so i started music in uh 2015 um quite by accident uh when you say accident what do you mean so music has always been in my family I've grown up with music. My, my, my family has always been like a group of singers, instrumentalists, just something. It's just around yeah, you all the time. Yeah. It was a, an in-house joke. We called ourselves the Ajiman Von Trapp family sometimes. <laughs> we would sing and yeah. yeah, we like to do those corny things families do sometimes. But yeah, I, I never really thought of music as a career that I could do. Not, not because um, I didn't think I was good enough or anything. It just didn't cross my mind as a thing that I was going, going to, to do, do or yeah. could do. Um, for me, what I actually wanted to do was act. So it's very interesting because I feel like things have come full circle. I wanted to act. I used to go for auditions at the time. Um, but I then used to be very, very introverted. I still am a bit introverted, but I feel like the industry, being in the industry for about seven years, has made me a bit more outspoken than I normally would be. So I remember at that time, I used to have panic attacks. I used to be very introverted. So I would practice my monologues and everything, but I'd go in, in front of the, the panel and completely lose it. And of course, they wouldn't pick you because you didn't do a good and how, job. And how did that make you feel? I, I, I used to feel so bad, and I, I wanted to figure out how to come out of my shell, which is a good thing, because I feel music helped me do that. Yeah, but yeah, back to music. Um, a friend of mine at some point in my life heard me sing and started to put a lot of pressure. Your voice is amazing. The world should hear your voice. It shouldn't just be me and a few other close friends and your phone and your recorder. Yeah. Like, do something, record a, a cover. And at first I was like, it's, I don't know. I don't, I'm not very confident. For me, it wasn't like, I, I knew I could sing, but I wasn't very confident about my abilities as a singer. Like, yeah, he used to put a lot of pressure. It was almost like on a daily basis. So honestly, it was to get him off my back that I finally succumbed and did a cover. And he's also a filmmaker, so he decided to shoot a small video for the cover that I did, which was the Bafira Adonai mashup. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, yay. Um, we just had fun. Yeah, we had fun. And I remember he, the funny thing is he used to talk about when you blow, I'll be your manager. And we'll do this. I was just like, bruh, bruh just relax. calm down. It's not that deep. <laughs> I didn't ever think. For me, it was just talks and we laugh about it. But he was serious. I, I honestly wasn't taking anything seriously. Yeah. But anyways, we did the cover. I was proud of myself. I'm like, yeah, I done, I done a song. Yeah. And it was nice. I just thought it was one of those things that would be on YouTube. I'd pass by to get like maybe 50 views. And that's I'd it. I'd pass by a few times and be proud of myself. So, and yeah. <laughs> with my life surprisingly it blew up and all of a sudden everybody is talking about that Aduma. Is. people are booking Aduma for gigs and it was very from that one video 
interviews. Um, people saw the video and thought, oh, that was really cool. Can you come and sing at my wedding? Can you come and sing at this event? I'm opening this restaurant. Can you come in? Yeah, it really started <laughs> that way. And it was all everywhere, TVs, radio stations. Now I would walk in, in town and people would see me and freak out, which was very uncomfortable for me because I've always been a very private person. So it was a lot going on. And I feel, so. but, but for me, um, that sort of, the person who shot the video, I told you, he had mentioned earlier on. Yeah, like he'll be your manager. He'll be your ma so in instantaneously, that just happened. It's like, I told you that you will blow. Yeah. It has happened. I'm your manager. Let's, let's start this. I wasn't too sure, but I just thought, OK, uh, go with it. It's working. Um, um, people seem to be impressed. I didn't think. I, was, I didn't feel very confident about my voice, but a lot of people feel, felt very impressed by it. So I'm like, OK, that, that, fine, let's, let's do this. I wasn't too sure. I was very uncertain, but I had my team fired up. My manager at the time would have his iPad with both mashups, the um, evolution of GH mashup, and he'd be at an event or any events he's at. And he would literally be going to people, yeah, so have you watched this video? This yeah. is my, my artist. I don't know if you, you should check her out. She's really amazing. And literally, that, that's, how, that's how music started for me. Um, but along the line, I feel like things were happening a little too fast. I remember, and this is sad, uh, and I, I feel very sad talking about this right now, but it was a real moment for me. At the time when I found out I was nominated for Unsung, Artist of the Year, I remember feeling a combination of feelings. It was, I was very happy because, and I was happy because if it, it's, it's good news for anybody doing yeah. music. It is good news. And my team had put in so much work, me and my team had put in so much work, and it was a good recognition. It's, it's accolades. It's good. But I remember also feeling very scared, and I didn't want to win because I felt like things had started off so fast for me. And it's like literally overnight, that's what it felt like. like one day, I, I was, was walking about, nobody yeah. knows who I am. Literally, then, and, and... <laughs> literally the next day, I'm at the, I had to stop taking trotro. I was at the bus stop trying to hop into my trotro. Adumale! So now, like, you are now a celebrity, basically, so you can't even be. It was just too much for me, too fast. And it felt like when I was nominated, it was going to even. And I felt like, so I was, like, trying so hard to keep up. And it was very uncomfortable. And I remember thinking, I didn't want this just because I wanted a moment where things were just calm so that I can catch my breath. And I, I wasn't getting that. So I remember talking to my dad about it. Like, is it, is it do I, am I a terrible person to not want? Like, it feels like you started this campaign on social media and everybody is supporting you. Vote at Duma. People I do not know are yeah. campaigning. Vote at Duma to win and sang. And you, the person that people are fighting for you are sitting there having second thoughts and not even wanting it and i remember having a conversation with my dad i'm very close to my dad by the way i remember having that conversation with my dad and he just calmed me down and reminded me at the time when i was acting i remember i had done some auditions there was a school i had gone into audition for and i actually got in but the timing was very odd so i couldn't go i remember feeling very devastated and my dad had told me i shouldn't worry everything would happen at the right time. This is just not the time. But if it's meant to happen, it will happen. So at the time where I was panicking about the VGME nomination, he said, pretty much said the same thing. Calm down. If you are meant to win it, you will. And, and God won't give you something that you can't carry. So you might feel like it's too much, but if it's meant to be, if it's not meant to be, it will not happen. But if he feels everything is happening the way it's supposed to be at the right time. So I took that to console myself for a bit. And I remember going for the announcement um, on Bella Mundi's show with the other um, Artist. artists. And I remember all of them feeling that, oh, yeah. People came in so much confidence. I was just sitting down there like, can they announce the winner so I can go home and try and <laughs> do other things? Because at the time, I remember at the time, I was still very, this was still very relatively new. So I was still very skittish and very to myself. And I don't want to, too many crowds. I still don't like crowds. but. I'm so much better right now. But yeah, 
to my shock, we were standing there and they mentioned Aduma. I am that confused. I remember Belamundi actually had to, like, no, for real, it's Aduma, she turned it in. So, like, how? Like, it, it was wild. And I remember panicking, like, oh my God, this had started so fast and it's going to even go yeah. worse. And then there was trolling on um, social media because at the VGMAs, there was like a huge divide when I performed. It was either people hated it or people loved it. And I remember not even being able to go on social media because my team had to keep me from the bad comments and there were good comments but I, I, this is stuff did you feel like you needed to know um both the good and the bad was it um, was it one of those um moments where there's something that scares you but you still want to know yeah one of those? yeah i still wanted to know but it definitely wasn't very helpful because i internalized a lot and it was hard so i remember sometimes my management had to take my phone from me and Nobody wanted me to, to see anything just so that it wouldn't affect me. But yeah, I remember I remember just praying and wishing things would slow down. And I felt bad for feeling that way because the people around me had, people had, I remember my manager at the time was supposed to go outside and do his master's. But he also is a creative and wanted to, he, this music and being part of music making was a huge dream for him. But he thought it would be something that, would happen later on and decided to stall his going Masters. to school to stay here and push my so you are sitting down there feeling very bad for not wanting it because yeah but thing. for me i wasn't ready and it was just too much too soon so I, it started to really affect me and this internally was chaotic people might have seen me outside and thought i might was very composed and no it was it was terrible we had I had a lot of um, blow-ups within the team because there was just so much I didn't know how to communicate. If I, if if, if people wanted, someone wanted to put, um, someone suggested to work on a song, I wanted to take my time with it, and it's like, no, the buzz is happening right now. You can't chill, and I'm. It, it just there was a lot of internalized frustrations, and I would end up lashing out at people unnecessarily, like nothing calls me for someone to be yelled at. Like that, and it was just really hard, and I think it made the team a bit confused, and things were not going well within the team, and with me as well. So I feel like that probably started the dip because I, I, yeah, it was it was a little too much, and I think the buzz too generally had we'll die started. Out if you don't, yeah, so if you have exactly. momentum and you don't use it, exactly. So that time. started dying down, and I remember feeling relieved but sad. Because I was relieved that ugh, finally it's a bit calm, but still sad because people had left things that they could be doing for themselves. To it was very, yeah. you know, both ways for me. But in that space, I remember um, still realizing and a bit because uh, I, I didn't know at the time that I wanted to do music. Yeah. It just it, like I said, it happened. So for me, I, I knew that I enjoyed making music. I enjoyed being on stage. I really did enjoy it but is i i would have felt better about making a conscious decision about this is what i want to do and like it's so much better if you do that than it just comes in you enjoy it all right but yeah let's just go with the flow so i remember questioning whether i really wanted to do this and there was so much going on as at outside i am my I had to switch management. My manager had to leave to do something else. I had to get another manager, and that didn't work. At the, this was the second manager that actually kick-started my acting career. That was the second one, but that too didn't go well, so I had to switch. So it just felt like I was bouncing around for a while. And I myself, I didn't know necessarily know what I wanted to do. But, and so uh, ended up in, whew, ended up in, yeah, this is very hard to talk about, but ended up in a, very bad situation with a record label. I do not want to mention their names because um, they're quite popular. But the the whole thing, it started off with them wanting to help and, you know, push Aduma because they really believed in the talent. But things went terribly sour, so sour that I quit. Like, I could not, and it, I didn't quit because I got to the point where I quit, no. It literally became toxic for me. I, for the first time, had a panic attack. And every single time I would try to sing a song or anything music related would come up, I would have a panic attack. I remember going to Nigeria at the time I was acting. Um, oh, I should 
go more into my acting story. But yeah, there was a point where I had to be in Nigeria to film and people would follow, because we're following each other on set and they would come to my social media, I don't mind music, oh, you're a musician. Oh, then come and sing. And I would start to panic. And it was very confusing <laughs> to everybody because like, if you're a singer, sing. But I was going through so much. And for me, music was a, I couldn't. It felt like I was being killed if I tried to touch it. So I, I did quit at a point. But I'm very happy because I feel like acting came at the point to save me and rekindle my love for music. So for me, both careers, I, I can't pick a favorite. I feel like they are very intertwined. Acting, what I always wanted to do. Music, what I was very, very good at, but I didn't realize. And um, I had a bit of a challenge with it. It had to dip. But acting helped me find my love for music. And now I'm acting and I'm doing music. For me, like both careers are so like, intertwined. intertwined and very, very um, important for me. So yeah, basically that's how the dip happened. And music so acting, gonna, yeah. Yeah, acting gonna, came at a time to save you. Yes, We're going to talk that. a bit about the acting in the, uh, later. Yeah. But I want to find out um, something that's dear to me and that I talk about all the time. Yeah. Did you get help? Uh, and I, I feel like in this part of the world, you know, it's very weird to talk about mental health. People don't acknowledge that it's a real thing. Um, they just feel like you are sad. You, when Even you with baby. your family? That's the thing. I, I didn't know how to have those conversations with my family because I felt that that's how they would, like a traditional African um, family, that's how they would perceive it. And for me personally, I don't even know that I was very aware. Like I've heard of, you know, therapy and all of those things, but I don't think I had pro properly processed and was like aware of, oh, you, I need help and I should get help. So for a long time, I was battling these things on my own. And I remember proper deteriorating. Like there was a period where for like two weeks, I did not step out of my room and I did not eat. And I remember <laughs> someone freaking out because that's when I lost a ridiculous amount of weight. Um, someone had seen me two weeks prior and I was skinny but not thin. And they saw me again two weeks later and they yelled because like, I lost weight because yeah, I was really going through things. And I feel like the reaction I got there made me, it hadn't, for me, I was in my head dealing with my thing. I didn't, I don't know how to put, explain it. Like I didn't, I wasn't fully aware of what was going on. It's like you're just in that space. But seeing people's reaction to what was going on made me realize that it was serious. So for me, um, I started to, uh, I didn't know how to talk about it. So I used to be online a lot and I used to read about therapy a lot. And I remember there was an app that I saw um, which, you know, they offer um, therapy options and those kinds of things. So I downloaded it, but I couldn't even follow through with it, although I did get some good tip tips from it. It was much, much, much later that I decided to actually go for therapy. But for me, um, in the midst of all of that, I just knew that, one, I can't do music. Two, I need to be out of this space. And yet, because in my house, my dad has been so supportive. When I said I wanted to do music, he donated, he has a steady room, or a steady house, literally, which is very separate from the main house because we're a lot of kids. So I think he just wanted a space where he can be on his own and steady read, do all of that, and not be in the main. He donated that whole space to me so, uh, for, for studio and just make your music. So he's been super supportive. But the sad part is my home was my music hub. So I can't come and have sanctuary in my house without seeing the place where I make music. It was, it was too much. So I know that I, I couldn't do music. I needed to be out of this space. And I just, I wanted, some, I wanted to do something else. I, I, I wasn't even thinking of acting at the time. I just knew I wasn't doing music. I wanted to be out of this space and out of this environment. I want to do something else. And, and so I remember telling him about it. And he's like, so what, what do you want? Because my dad is so supportive, like, if he can, Tell him if he can, he will. If he can't, he would see how to. But I didn't even know exactly what I wanted. I just knew I wanted to be out. And he's like, okay, go and think about it properly. It was at that point that the Nigerian um, acting gig came. It was so wild because I remember praying about it and thinking about it. And at that point, I don't even know how that happened. 
um, the, I just shot a film. It was in a premiering in the theaters, and it, one of the um, crew for that production had helped me secure a job in Nigeria. So for me, it was like a lifesaver because this was one. I'm out of the environment. I'm to going to of. a different country. I am not doing music. I'm doing something else. And this is also something else that I'm so passionate about. So it was like, a, I, I, I couldn't pick that offer fast enough. <laughs> he literally told me a week prior, we need to move in a week. I was ready before the week. I packed my bags. Like I just wanted to go. And I feel like, that was really, really helpful because doing something else, immersing myself in something completely different, being in a new environment, meeting new people, developing excitement for something else, gave me the calm I needed, even without doing proper therapy, I'd been doing dabbling a bit, it gave me some kind of calm. So by the time I came back, I, I was in a much, 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 much better place. And so, that it was after coming back that I, okay, I was like, okay, you need help, you need work. And that's when I did start therapy. And in the, in the process, um, I started to rekindle my love for music again and actually started to make a conscious decision that, okay, this, I don't want to be doing interviews and to be saying, music happened, it was an accident. If it's something that you're passionate about or something you enjoy, then you should want to do it because you want to do it. So I remember literally having to have that conversation with myself. Do you really want to do this for real? Like, for real? And after pondering for a while, I realized that, yeah, I do. As much as I love acting, I do not, I have never felt more fulfilled in my life than I have when I make music. It is the I, I, I can't, I can't explain it. And for me to go for the rest of my life and not have that sense of fulfillment would just feel like I've lived a very wasteful, purposeless life. So I, I literally had to come into that um, realization and then I decided, okay, I'm going to do music. But this time I am picking, it's like music picked me. I'm choosing the first this time. time. But now I am choosing you. And so for me, I'd, luckily for me, all the bad experiences, even though they were bad, they sort of had served as some kind of um, trial test, test run. So now I'm coming back, I'm doing music. I'm very intentional, I've had bad experiences. I know, okay, this is not what should be this. I, like, I'm aware now, I can make my decisions. I'm, I know what I want. I know the kind of sound I want to do is not, I'm doing my covers, and someone says, oh, do original music. Oh, OK, I'll do original music. Oh, it would be nice if you tried this beat. Oh, OK, I'm trying. Oh, it's been... Now you send me music, I know. I can tell you, oh, this is not my vibe. Oh, I can't, like, this is not. I don't want uh, to yeah, do I don't want to do this, because I know. Before, it was more like, OK, like, let's just go with the flow. So I feel like, yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where it was, that's where I am. At. Right now, I'm very, very, I know what I'm doing. I'm very intentional about the music I'm putting out. Um, the project actually is in like, very creative musical terms, curating this journey from when I started till now. That's what the entire thing is about. But yeah, try to be very creative with it. But yeah, and, and I, because of what's acting and the role that acting played in, my, in where I am right now with music, I felt like I needed, I can't, I can't, I can't just make music. I can't exclude acting from that process. And so that is why I, I came up with the Becoming Adoma. It's called um, Becoming Adoma. Um, I came up with that project. So is that like yeah. a film? Yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, it is a film. Um, basically starting from when I started um, music till now, the journey. I started off as a butterfly. And I had to, the life, that's the thing, I shouldn't have said a butterfly, because the lifespan of a butterfly is really, really short. I think they live generally for like three weeks and yes. then they're dead. So that wasn't very sustainable, but I do not know. And literally it wasn't sustainable because after a while my music dipped. But yeah, basically chronicling um, the butterfly phase and how f nice things looked in this like experiment. So what would you say you are now, a phoenix? Yeah, interesting, yeah. Because I had to die, go through fire, and be reborn from the ashes. <laughs> so literally, yeah. that's what I am now. I don't know that I want to have it as a, a persona like the way I had the butterfly, but the story, it feels like that is what it is. I started off as Afraba, which is a character, 
um, the next project I put out was barely Adoma, which is like, because you are not sure what's going on. You have things that you feel like are you, but then there's a lot of so many things going on. Yeah. And this is like becoming, like I'm not Afaba. I'm not barely, I'm becoming who I feel I'm supposed to be as an artist. And yeah, so that's what, that's what the project is about. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful to hear. <laughs> and um, uh, how are the people around you now um, reacting to, should I say, the new you? Yeah. Um, and also, where do you think uh, the place should be for mental health, especially in this industry? Like, do, do you think that um, other artists should pay more attention to it as, as... See, artists and creatives, we're going through a lot. And I feel like we channel that a lot into our art and it's entertaining because that's what we do. It's, we, we, we channel it into entertainment. But there's a lot of pain and a lot of struggles that is in that that people overlook because you're just taking the entertainment value from it. So it's very important to check on your friends, especially your friends that are creatives and that please check on them. And just they themselves need to check on them. Like, because the things that you're going through that you're pouring into your art and the art may be so beautiful and people might appreciate it and all of that. The industry, music industry is not a fun place. I've been here, it's not fun. Um, people are hustling and trying, there's so many things happening. So like, yeah, I feel like it's so important as a musician, as a creative, just generally for other people, it's so important. I, I needed to start therapy. I've not, I feel like I'm in a very good space now, so I've sort of cut down, but I, it's not something I've completely left out because I do not want to get to that point, but it's really, really important to check, like, get, get help. Get, I, <laughs> I cannot overemphasize it because it's really tough. And people, I know around these parts, it's not something people consider to be a real thing or like people just see it as you are sad or you're just trying to be lazy. But it's, it's real. It's, I've gone through a lot of, I've been suicidal. I've attempted suicide at a point. It's wow. so weird to talk about because I, it's just my, my, my team and I don't know if my, Okay, no, my dad, my dad didn't know. But yeah, just my dad, because I'm really close to my dad. So my team and, I'm, and my dad are aware. This is my first time I'm actually saying this out loud, but I did. And so it's, it's so important to, to get help, to talk to somebody. And there, I feel like it should be a thing. It should be so much more of a thing right now in this country, because people are really going through it. it right now, yeah. Is it a running theme in your um, yes. project? Yes, yes, it is. Because it if you're combining two very powerful art forms, yeah. I think yeah, it is. That it definitely advocacy is. in that space. Should. Yeah, definitely, it is. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? <sighs> I'm so uh, I'm so overwhelmed when I think about the project because looking at everything that I have had to go through to get here, I I'm 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 proud of the journey. I, I, I would not have wished it had to go through this process, but I'm very happy that it did, because I feel like there are people, so many people that can relate, and people that would watch it and would find um, some connection and it would serve as some help to them. So I, for me, I just don't want it to be entertainment. Like There's that factor, but there's so much more to it than that. I want people to identify with the journey and let it soothe you if, if, if it's possible. Let it inspire you to, to get help if you can. Like, yeah. For me, it's a very, it's come full circle for me. And it's still a journey. I wouldn't say I'm 100%, but like I was on negative yeah, <laughs> thereabouts. I'm now. way, way above 50% right now. So that's a good thing. But like, think, life is in phases, you know. Things come and things go. I, I do know that it's important to to still, you know, to still stay in that space where you know that you're your best self and to get help and to interact with people that are good for your mental, to stay away from toxicity. That's what I was, I was coming like, to. Cause I for mean, me, yeah. the world is still worlding in yeah, a way. Yeah. So I was just going to find out what you're going to do different in terms of um, going through social media yeah. and all these things that people say that barely know you yeah. and how it gets to you, how are you... Um, yeah. 
for me, I'm the biggest, the most important thing to me in life is peace of mind. I do not play with my peace. I do not joke. Like, I do not. So I'm very, very, very particular about the things that I allow into my space. If you are toxic, if there, I would, ex I would remove myself with a quickness because I know where I've been and I do not want to go back there. And it's the little, little things. It doesn't seem like such a big deal at first, but it just starts small and then becomes a big thing. So for me, I'm, I'm, I curate my space very, very, <laughs> I'm very particular. I've muted so many things on Twitter, for example, that I do not want to see. I don't make it a habit of being there too often for one, because there's so much going on and you don't, I don't want to be affected there. Sometimes I just scroll by and I read a tweet and it can mess up my entire day. And I'm just like, why did I, why did I even? So I'm like, I'm very, very, very particular. I don't like to spend so much time there. I'm very particular about the people who are very close to me because I don't need any, I don't, I don't need any of that energy. People who I date, people like my friend, yeah. All you, of that. There's drama. Because I do not do drama. It's funny because I'm, you act, I you act in drama, drama, but I do not do drama in <laughs> real life. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's how that's been for me. It's very, 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 very intentional. Very. It's been wonderful talking to you. Yeah. I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. And I hope anybody who watches this also does take a lot from this. Yes. Um, I'm a staunch advocate for the conversations like this, especially yeah. ones that bring out... Um, topics of mental health yeah. and keeping the peace in your mind and your body yeah. and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, dogs. We're looking forward to the project. Is there a title? You didn't mention a title. Yeah, the project is called um, Becoming Adoma. Becoming Adoma, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, you did yeah, mention Becoming that. Becoming Adoma. Yeah. And it's in four parts. So there's, um, there's a documentary. So, and there's a documentary bit. There's the film. Um, there's the actual music. It, in itself and then later at the end of the year I'm going to have a musical so I'm still very much about combining both so I want to put do a show because like naturally after your project you have a music yeah, show yeah. but I don't want to take away the acting bits from it because it's so a it's part a musical. of them, so it, it is a musical so Wonderful. that's going to be in December um, the music project in itself will be coming out in September I'm making an announcement kind of like a trailer to the movie bits in like I think May so next week I don't know when this is airing, but like next week, <laughs> and and uh, this might be airing after. After, yeah. Before. So we don't yeah. Know. So this is probably out now. So you should check it out if it's out um, on my website, aduma.com. Um, but yeah, and then there'll be screenings. Um, there's going to be a premiere of the film, and then there'll be screenings every Sunday after the premiere. The premiere will be in July. Every Sunday at the uh, after the premiere, yeah, there'll be screenings of the film. How long is the that, film? Um, we're combining the documentary and the film, so it should roughly be about an hour. Okay. For everything. Almost a feature length. Yeah, yeah, almost, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically, so that's, that's, the, that's the project. And for me, it's, I, I, I'm focused on making it an experience, because for me, it's more than just, I feel like there's so much that has happened, and I just don't want it to be like I'm coming back into music. Yes, I am. But I'm coming back with <laughs> so much more. Yeah. Um, so the, the, at the screenings, at the premiere, there's going to be live performance. I'm going to perform every, after you've watched, watched everything, perform at all the screenings. There'll be questions. You can talk about uh, mental health, these kinds of conversations. We can actually have them at the event. I'm open to answer all the questions. I'm, I've decided to be as vulnerable as I can for this, for this, <laughs> for this project. So way. yeah. So yeah, um, if you're watching this, please do go on adama.com and get your tickets. There are different packages, very interesting packages. It's going to be really, really, really fun. I've put a lot of thoughts. We started working on this in 2020 during the lockdown. So lots of thoughts, <laughs> <laughs> lots of thoughts and effort has gone into it. So it definitely is going to be one that you would really enjoy. So please make sure you're around, yeah, for it. Yeah. Wonderful. And that's on that. Cut. Okay, We're done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you too.